love as the ultimate leadership skill. It's inspiring. It creates a connection among your team. Individuals are excited about what you're building together. And there is a sense of togetherness within that. When you are leading, you're not only leading someone else, but they're also leading you to understand how to be a better leader to them. I didn't understand how anyone could say that business wasn't personal because I invested so much of myself into my business, into my work. It was very personal for me. The business wouldn't exist without the people. Value wouldn't exist without the people. You're part of this team because we value you as a member of this team. So share with us your skills, your knowledge. Imagine what we as a society could accomplish if we took the time to make sure that everyone was seen, heard, and understood. You know, we had talked in another podcast about how, you know, when it comes to business, more than once in my career, I heard people say, it's not personal, it's business, and think that they could strike up a business deal that really undermined our friendship and our connection because it was business. And then we could go out and have drinks or dinner together later, and that it would not have an impact. And for me, I didn't understand how anyone could say that business wasn't personal because I invested so much of myself into my business, into my work. It was very personal for me. And that's why I wanted to focus on talking about why love is an ultimate leadership skill. And that is whether it's in your life, whether it's in your business, no matter where it is in your personal relationships, if you are leading in anything, just leading your life, love is an ultimate leadership skill. And if you ever get to a point where you say it is business, it is not personal, then you need to take a step back and ask yourself, am I leading with love? Am I leading with integrity? And am I truly doing something that I care about? So that I would really love to dive in with you today. I'm all for it. Awesome. So when we're talking about, and we had to do this with our own organization here, right? Like the Heart Leader podcast is an extension of Suivera, mm -hmm. which is a global organization. We're in 113 countries now. Yes. And just on one community alone, we have 1.2 million people at this just point. About. So we had to ask ourselves as we're growing this team and we're growing our movement, what is it that we're focused on and how do we build this in love, right? What is it that drives us and makes us excited? And when we're talking about leading with love, it is exactly that, right? What drives our team to be excited every day, to want to connect with us and strive toward our mission, whether that's Suivera itself as the organizational whole or the Heart Leader podcast, what we're doing here in the groups and individuals that are helping us put this together. Because if we're treating them like cogs in a wheel, and we're just saying, do this, do this, do this. It's not personal. I don't want to know anything about you. I could care less what your home life is like. Just do what I say and make it happen. Then what are they going to do? They're going to do the bare minimum for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't care about me. Why should I care about your project? Yeah. How many businesses practice that way? I was part of a lot of them. A lot of them. And so what you end up with are people who are part of your organization or part of your life who are just phoning it in. Hmm. There's no true connection to the purpose of what you're creating together. And there's no true connection to you. 
So why are they going to support your mission and why are they going to support you? Why would they follow you anywhere? Doesn't sound very inspiring to me. Yeah. And so when we're talking about love as the ultimate leadership skill, it's inspiring. It creates a connection among your team. Individuals are excited about what you're building together. And there is a sense of togetherness within that, right? Now, how many of us have been part of either a team or even a relationship where it was more do as I say, not as I do? That was a common saying Mm. when I was growing up, right? Sounds like the biggest cop out ever. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Did you ever hear that? Oh, yeah, all the time. It's just, there's no meaning behind that, you know? If, if you're not, if you're saying that and not willing to do it, then why would I listen to you? It just makes, there's no, it makes no sense. Yes. It's, yeah. And so when you're talking about leading with love, it's also leading with your actions, mm-hmm. right? Your actions are a reflection of love. I desire to hear you. I'm creating a safe space for you to tell me your ideas to tell me your feedback, to share with me how you see this mission or this vision, even if it's in a relationship, right? You and I. Yeah. To see how, to tell me how you see this moving forward. And then I have to be willing to shut up and listen, right? But it's the same the other way as well. When you've created that safe space as a leader for someone to share that with you, then they're going to listen to you in return. Maybe not in the beginning because they might be jaded from all the other experiences they had. But what we've noticed through our organization, Suivera, is at first it's like deer in a headlight. What's happening here? What's happening? But as they settle in and they notice that this isn't a trick, We really honor and respect what you're bringing to the table. We desire you're part of this team because we value you as a member of this team. So share with us your skills, your knowledge, but also hear us when we say this is the direction we're going. Then suddenly we're growing in ways that you and I alone couldn't have envisioned, but we're still staying focused on our organizational direction. Right. Yeah. Oh, it, for me, one of the things that I feel is so critical with all this, and why love is such an important aspect of of leadership and the ultimate quality, is because it's not just one way. And I feel like that's everything that you're saying. When we view lead, leadership, we tend to, and you know, when I went to school and learned you know all these management classes and all these different things and read books about leadership it always seemed to be one way from one person to another from one person leading another or a group of people but what you're bringing forward is the reality and that is that any relationship regardless of what it's called is a two-way street and so i know we talked briefly about that in the last episode But it's really important to highlight when it comes to leadership qualities, right? Because when you have that understanding that love is the is the basis for that two way street, then you can understand that when you are leading, you're not only leading someone else, but they're also leading you to understand how to be a better leader to them, and then so on and so forth. And then on another level, you're also learning how to lead yourself. If you're not a good leader of your own life in the way that you choose to act, speak, think, feel, how are you going to lead others? Yeah. Or maybe you could, but how effectively are you going to lead others is probably the differentiation. Yeah. And I think about it, if we're talking business, like we can talk two different angles of this, which is leading our life, our personal life, 
and leading in business, which is where like we started yeah. the discussion, right? So in business, I know coming up through my career, I was definitely taught you keep a distance from your staff. You definitely keep a distance from creating an environment that could make it feel like family because family is outside of work. It is not inside of work. We are not here to be family. We're barely here to be friends. It is all about, you just don't know when you're going to have to lay people off, right? So you don't get close to them. Well, it's impossible to create a leadership of love-based system when people are looked at as assets and not as individuals. And it was very challenging as an individual who was a heart-centered leader to operate in an environment like that. So what you ended up with was, and if someone like myself was within that system, was someone who felt torn apart because you were able to see that a business would flourish more if people did feel connected to one another, if they felt connected to their leader and they had created a system of trust and that their leader understood that there was no way to separate a personal life from an organizational life. Hmm. Like I don't walk through a door and suddenly the fact that my child is sick goes out of my head and I'm able to give you 100% of my focus. No matter how much you demand that out of me, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And so we can pretend that it's happening and live in an illusion, or you can understand that I'm concerned. My child is at home sick and someone else is taking care of them that I don't know that I fully trust. So I'm only half paying attention today. And as a leader who is based in caring about my staff member, I then can make a choice. I can say, I understand and I appreciate you being here and acknowledge that if I truly need them here. And then they feel seen, heard, and understood, which is all most of us want, right? That simple acknowledgement of, I understand what you must be going through. I see you. I hear you and I understand that in itself creates that sense of connection to the leader and that sense of connection to purpose, especially if you then say, I really appreciate that you understand our mission right now really needs, even if it's only half of your focus, the half of your focus that you're giving us. But if you need to go home, depending on the circumstance, then I would understand that too. You're humanizing the individual instead of optimizing the slight little bit of performance that you might get. But over time, you're going to optimize performance a lot more by giving the person the human touch because they're going to come back once their child is well. And they're going to be so grateful for you seeing them as a person but they're going to work five times harder to show you that they appreciate being seen. And we've shown this time and time again in research studies on organizations that do practice this approach. But for some reason, we're still missing that. We're still missing the recognition that infusing love and human connection into the workplace actually optimizes performance. Because people desire to be seen, heard, and understood. Yes. So much yes. <laughs> it's amazing how we've been, humanity, when it comes to business, have been so caught up in optimizing for the bare minimum without really realizing it. And, and that's what I love that you're pointing out. And so if you're attempting to extract, it's kind of like that pulling from, um, pouring from a, an empty cup or an empty uh, pitcher of water, right? And so when you optimize for love and you connect in that love, 
well, okay, now you're getting an overflowing pitcher of water. Yeah. And that's actually going to yield a lot more. And so I really appreciate you sharing that. And it's, it's always surprised me of how many businesses, even though they view people as assets, but the reality is, is maybe the truck or the trucks or, you know, the uh, software or these things are the actual, at the real estate are the actual assets of the business. And they tend to give more care and awareness to those than the people themselves. But the business wouldn't exist without the people. Value wouldn't exist without the people. So I, I don't, it doesn't even make sense to approach business in that way. Yeah. I agree. And in truth, you know, we have all of these, and I, I do desire to give organizations who have implemented this approach mm-hmm. a huge, like, hats off to you, yeah. where they are proactively implementing self-care approaches to health, Mm -hmm. right? Where if you have a gym membership, they'll reward you for that. And if you work out. And so all of these things for preventive health measures instead of reactive health measures, that's a wonderful thing. But if you truly desire to have a preventive health measure in place, infuse love, be a love-based leader. Mm and create a love-based culture in your work environment because love reduces stress. And when you reduce stress in a work environment and you create a work environment that people are excited and proud to take part in, then health improves. And we, again, seem to miss that step. If it's great that you have other things that you're implementing where you reward working out or having gym memberships and all of the other things. But let's get one more step ahead and let's create positive work cultures where people feel connected to one another and uplift one another and see the humanity in one another. And at that point, all the next step, which is what we have in place, will be elevated even more because the, that connected community will encourage each other to work out together, mm-hmm. to meditate together, to take breaks together and go play on the pool tables or whatever game room you might have. But if you have all those systems in place and nobody's utilizing them because they don't feel drawn together and they don't really know why they're there, and Again, I worked in an environment where we had all those fun things, but really they never got used because people, they just didn't peel themselves out of their offices long enough to go use them. Or you know, maybe they felt like if they did, then they'd actually be reprimanded for it. Yes. And so again, love, that's why love is such an ultimate leadership skill. Yeah. When you start to recognize like, look, we just want to be we're pack animals. Like it or not, we're pack animals. We want to be bonded together. But that has to come from the leadership quality of the individual who's leading whatever that initiative is. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to put together because I know it sometimes when you're focused one direction and you're told one way, this is how you lead. Keep that distance. Make certain you don't get too involved. It's really hard to then pivot and go, okay, I do see the value. I understand because we're going to provide links that help if you desire to do research to understand how love-based leadership can benefit an organization. Mm -hmm. But then, okay, how do you do that, right? How do you, number one, know if it will benefit your culture? Mm -hmm. And number two, begin to take those steps, right? So... We're going to include a PDF download that you can begin to ask yourself, am I creating a love-based culture? And we'll make that available with this, Mm -hmm. uh, with this podcast. And two, we have courses that can assist in building up heart leaders 
is what we call them, individuals who lead with love and infuse that into the culture. So we can make certain now that we are creating my new life launchpad that we provide information about that, but also just data around all of the benefits of becoming and investing in yourself so that you can adopt those practices into your organization. Yeah. I love it. There's a huge difference between an advanced society and an evolved society. An advanced society is leading with the head and logic. An evolved society is leading from the heart in collaboration with logic. And that's why we created that term heart leader is because it's a love infused leadership. And so we are kind of at a tipping point as a society, as humanity as a whole, to really decide, do we want to be an advanced society or do we want to be an evolved society? And as the saying always goes, you can't spell evolution without love. So one is clearly more infused with love than the other. And we've been talking a lot about leadership with love in business. But as we've talked about as well, you cannot walk into your organization and just, oh, this is what I do here, but I do not do it in my personal life. Mm -hmm. Right. If you are a heart based leader, you're a heart based leader in your whole life. It isn't something you just turn on when you walk into an organization and suddenly, voila, here I am. So how do you do it in your, what are the benefits of doing it in your personal life as well? I mean, maybe you are not a leader at work. That's not something you feel comfortable doing. You're not a leader in an organization. You really enjoy being in a support role. But that doesn't mean you're not leading your life. You're not leading a life that has contributions in some way. And that's where like a relationship, whether you're a parent, whether you're just in a partnership, or whether you're a child and you have parents, which all of us do at some point, we're going to hit a stage where our parents need us. Mm -hmm. And so we have to take a leadership role. How we do that matters. And if we were going back to the phrase, do as I say, not as I do, if there was ever a time we were brought up with something similar to that, then again, it goes back to, is that how we desire to lead our lives and how we desire to support others. Yeah. And that type of saying just feels hypocritical and uninspired. So are you really going to make that big of a difference when making a statement like that? Yeah. Not so much. And so some of the questions to ask yourself, and again, we'll have a PDF that has some of these in there, but are you creating a system where individuals feel safe mm. and heard, right? And that includes you. Yeah, That's absolutely. And I feel like it's maybe reshaping as you're doing, reshaping what it means to be a leader. So you're right, not everyone can be a lead in a leadership role in a business, like you're saying. But even if you're in a support role in business, you're leading by showing the leader what actually needs to be done and how it can be done. And so you are part of the collaboration of that. And then as you're saying, you're leading your own life. I mean, that's, that's our opportunity. If you really desire to make an impact and really live the life that, that you truly desire, it can't be from a passive way. It has to be active. It has to be dire directed. And so you are leading your own life no matter what, you know, even if we feel like things are happening to us, the result is ha things are happening with us. That's the actual truth. And so it's just a perspective. When we can get better at understanding that leadership starts with us, even in a support role, 
then you're leading the support. Yes, very much so. And when you are a leader, the best thing that you can do is get support from those who are leading that support. So again, it's back to that two-way street. And that's what love is. Love is a recognition of that oneness, that connection, that unity, that back and forth, that one can't exist without the other. That is coexistence in its fullest potential. And to me, that is what an evolved society looks like. It practices, it acts, it understands that we, we are in need of each other. We are, as you beautifully say, we are independently dependent. And when love is the very core of that essence, oh, I mean, that's talk, um, productivity reaches a whole other level that I don't know if humanity has ever truly experienced or if they have. It's been a very, very long time. Imagine what we as a society could accomplish if we un took the time to make sure that everyone was seen, heard, and understood. It may not be 100%, but it's I mean, it's clearly not 100% right now. So, yeah. you know, I mean, let's be honest. So even if we, if we just moved the needle a little bit, how much of that time that we spend on conflict and in misunderstanding and, and just I don't care anymore attitude, all that time that is wasted on that, how much could be put into supporting one another, to loving one another, to caring for. And then what would that yield? Talk about an evolved society, that's what an evolved society would look like. Yeah. And when we say, I want to clarify, yeah. when we say seen, heard, and understood, that doesn't mean agreed with. <laughs> yes, thank you. Right? It's very, very good. So, you know, being having the skill of being a love-based leader doesn't mean that you just passively agree with everything around you. It does mean that you take the time to see people, to hear people, and to understand, right? Mm -hmm. But you are not going to agree with everything that everyone says. You can agree to disagree, and that is fine. I love that terminology. <laughs> Insert anchor man. <laughs> Insert. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you take that time, then you learn about yourself too. Yeah. And we talk about this all the time. It's like my favorite thing to do. Because when we take that time and we do receive the feedback and we do take the time to understand others, then we learn something new about ourselves. And that's what creates that environment of trust that environment of safety, that environment where new ideas spark, right? When we're talking about, and it doesn't have to be in business, in our connections with others, these wellsprings of new ideas begin to form and we start innovating left and right. And that then goes to the evolution, right, that we're talking about. But we have to be willing to take that step. And when we live in that fear-based separation approach, which does happen so often in organizations and even in relationships, you can't be better than me. I have to have a safe distance because if I let you too close, you're going to hurt me, you're going to step all over me. You're going to rise above me. No, no, no. That's a fear-based approach that we have in our organizations and even in our personal lives so often. But there's only so much I can do by myself. And so I have to, if I desire to evolve, I have to be willing to allow love to connect me on a deeper level with others in order to spark that creativity, in order to spark that innovation, and in order to grow within myself and grow together. And a good leader, it's another one quote that I love, a good leader is someone who's willing to go first and then share what they've learned and bring others along but they do it with their team, right? It isn't as though you're doing it and you're up here and others are down here. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It's we're doing it together. I'm just willing to go first. Mm-hmm. Right. Willing to go in for the cause. And that's one of the things. And maybe I'm not the one who's best to go first. Maybe my skill set doesn't make me. I might be the leader, but maybe my skill set doesn't make me best to go first. Maybe your skill set makes you best to go first this time. And so I need, if I'm a loving leader, I need to be willing to say, look, I am not the best this time. Austin is. And hand over the reins and not feel like my ego has taken a hit for it. Right. And so that gets to another question that you can ask yourself, right? Am I creating that type of a culture? Whether it's in my relationships or it's in my organization, am I creating a culture where individuals feel like they can step up where their skills are what are in demand and know that they'll be rewarded for it? know that they'll be supported for it and know that leadership, all leadership would be willing to say, that is not my specialty. And I am grateful. I commend you for your willingness to the mission to step up for the mission and move our organization forward. Okay. That sounds pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Yeah. That's inspiring to me. And that's what draws people in. It attracts the best talent. Mm -hmm. People desire to be part of that. They desire to be part of an organization that rewards them for their talents, that not only sees them, hears them, and understands them, but then acknowledges them Mm -hmm. for their contributions. Mm -hmm. And love based leaders do that. Mm -hmm. Those who are fearful do not. It's interesting because fear is seen as a powerful move and it has been for a long time in humanity. The interesting thing though to me is that fear, although experienced definitely by humanity, to some degree experienced by the animal kingdom, if you will, mm-hmm. I just don't know any plants that really respond to fear. Like if you say, I'm going to cut you down, like, is, is, I mean, are they fearful? No. But studies have shown with love, if you tell a plant how much you love it, it grows better. You tell an animal how much you love it, it responds at a very different level. And we all know that when you tell a human that you love them, that that's to me life changing. Yeah. And so is fear really that strong when love is what can unite at all levels of what is alive on this planet right now? Which one is truly the strength? 100%. I remember working in an organization and I was at an executive level, right? where you would estimate all of those executive level individuals would have a certain level of respect for one another. But a level above me, the individual went running down the hallway like you would anticipate a five-year-old doing celebrating the fact that I made a mistake and announcing to everyone that I had made a mistake. Mm. Gleefully, their ego getting the better of them, desiring to catch me in a mistake. All of the individuals on my team were so confused that this was the type of environment we were in. My team came to me and said, what is going on? Why is this individual running down the hallway with a piece of paper shouting, Amber made a mistake. Amber made a mistake. She doesn't know what she's doing. Amber made a mistake. I'm like, I have no idea. So then I had to meet with this individual who was one level above me and say, can you help me understand where I made a mistake? 
after about 45 minutes of being lambasted for what this individual perceived was a mistake in my area of expertise. This individual was not their area of expertise. Pointing out to me where they perceived I made a mistake, I calmly listened and at the end, turned the piece of paper over and pointed out to this individual where their error was mm. and where I had not made a mistake. Mm. I did not grab the piece of paper and go running back down the hallway saying that they had made a mistake. They had made a mistake, even though every ounce of me wanted to. <laughs> Instead, I let it go because I knew it would not be helping either one of us to continue that type of behavior. But I can tell you in that moment, I felt so small. And it took weeks for people to stop talking about what occurred. When you have those type of work environments, it doesn't matter what level you're at. And I share that story for that reason. Because I know quite often, and I started out as an admin, and I know what it is like in the support roles where we think one day when I get to be at a certain level, then all of this goes away. It doesn't. When there is an organization that does not have love from all leaders at the top, then it doesn't matter. It has to come from the very, very top, and it has to be a culture that's set. And it has to come from the very, very, it has to come from everyone. Every person contributes, and every person can influence how the flow goes, but it takes every person, and it takes leadership above all to start to influence that culture. But when you do, you will see major shifts. So by my one act of refusing to participate and refusing to go back and say, this didn't happen, then it didn't fuel the fire. And it did stop after a few weeks and individuals stopped talking about it and we moved on. But ultimately, what it took for this entire organization to shift was for all of those executives to move out and a new group of executives to move in that did have a love-based approach. So I am happy to say from what I hear, there is a love-based approach going on now at that organization. But we have to be willing. We have to be willing even when we're not being appreciated to refuse to play. Thank you for sharing that. That's I, nine and a half years together, and I have never heard that story. So I appreciate you sharing that. Happy to. Sharing our stories is what helps each of us learn and know that we can make it through things, right? Absolutely. So we're going to include a PDF that have questions on it, but one of, I mean, we have so many different things that we can learn from and learn about how to be a heart-centered leader. When you have love as a key leadership skill, what you're doing is you're taking both yourself and individuals from simply surviving to thriving. And that's really what we're seeking to do. 